Today on People Now, Kim Kardashian West meets up with Donald Trump at the Oval Office to talk prison reform. Yes, you heard that right, we have details. And John Goodman is finally speaking out about the Roseanne Barr controversy. Could there be a spinoff without Roseanne? J-Law poses with her ex, Darren Aronofsky. Hey, maybe exes can be friends. Maybe. J-Law talks aging ahead of turning 50. Well, more like not aging. Yeah, she looks amazing. Amazing. Plus, we are tracking the royals today. Where are Meghan and Harry going for their honeymoon? We want to know. It's all today on People Now. Happy Thursday! Welcome to People Now. And you guys, it's a really good day because it is National Smile Day. Lilith's already doing it. <laughs> and even though it's pretty gloomy outside here in New York, there's always. always a reason to smile. So we're asking you all, what puts a smile on your face? Maybe it's puppies, puppies. or other people. I don't know. It's a like question it. of the day. I like a good sale. Tweet us <laughs> at people with the hashtag People Now. But first, here's what you need to know and what's trending today. Starting with this. John Goodman has spoken out for the first time since Roseanne's cancellation by saying he'd rather stay quiet. In a video taken at an auto repair shop in New Orleans and obtained by Entertainment Tonight, the 65-year-old actor said he would, quote, rather say nothing than to cause more trouble. Well, Goodman, who assured fans that everything's fine with him, said that he's not familiar with Twitter and had no comment on Barr's racist tweet controversy. Goodman also shrugged off rumors that Roseanne would no longer be eligible for Emmys, saying, quote, I wasn't going to get an Emmy anyway. I've been up there 10 times already, and if I didn't get one, I'm not going to get one. And as for rumors of a spin-off featuring the cast without Barr, Goodman dismissed the gossip, saying, quote, then you've heard more than I have. Well, there you have it. Roseanne Barr's ex-husband, Tom Arnold, is also weighing in on the Roseanne cancellation and controversy. Arnold claiming that Barr was ready to say goodbye to the show after just one season of the reboot, telling The Hollywood Reporter, quote, if it hadn't happened, this season would have been so awful for everyone every day because she would have felt like she was being taken advantage of. Arnold suggested that taking away Barr's phone might have prevented her Twitter rant, saying, quote, ABC lost maybe $1 billion from this. This show was grinding out money hand over fist, and they lost it all because somebody didn't say, get that phone out of her hand. Arnold also claimed Barr obviously suffered from mental illness, telling Anderson Cooper in an interview, quote, she's having mental issues right now, but that doesn't make it okay. They had to cancel the show. We'll stay on people.com for all updates on this story. Well, Donald Trump may have postponed his meeting with North Korea's Kim Jong-un, but he did meet another famous Kim on Wednesday, Kim Kardashian West. That is right. The wow. president shared a photo of him and the reality star on Twitter Wednesday following their meeting in the Oval Office. In his tweet, Trump writes in part, quote, great meeting with Kim Kardashian today, talked about prison reform and sentencing. Welcome to 2018. <laughs> Meanwhile, Kardashian West shared a photo of the presidential seal on the White House carpet with the caption, happy birthday, Alice Marie Johnson, today is for you. Now that's a reference to the 62-year-old great-grandmother who was incarcerated in 1996 for a first-time nonviolent drug offense. Now Kim has been helping campaign for Johnson's presidential pardon. Kim also tweeted on Wednesday following the meeting, saying in part, quote, I would like to thank President Trump for his time this afternoon. I like that Kim is very passionate about this cause and going for it. Absolutely. All right, you guys, take a look at this picture of Queen Elizabeth from Wednesday. Do you see anything interesting? Mm. Well, we have some eagle-eyed royal fans to thank for this one. So they spotted this never-before-seen photo of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle sitting on one of the side tables in the Queen's living room. Whoa. We got some spies here, you guys. In the photo, Harry is pictured wearing a blue suit, while Meghan wears a light Fitted, a light fitted dress with her hair down and poses with a hand on Harry's chest. Now it's not clear when and where the photo was snapped, but some are speculating it may have been taken during their engagement photo shoot with photographer Alexei Lubomirsky. Now some photos from that session were released in December, though none with Harry and Meghan in these particular outfits. People, the royals are very passionate, you guys. <laughs> Stick around, because we're talking all things royal honeymoon with our royal correspondent, Imogen Lloyd Webber. That's coming up in just a little bit. And Lola, you have even more for us in Star Trek. I sure do. We're kicking off Star Trek with former flames who are still smiling for the cameras. Now, who says you can't be friends with an ex? I do, but anyway. <laughs> Jennifer Lawrence had no problem reuniting with her ex-boyfriend, director Darren Aronofsky, Wednesday night. And get this. She even presented him with an award. The Oscar-winning actress attended the BAM Gala, which honored Aronofsky, and she told the crowd, quote, I'm thrilled to be here tonight to present this honor to my very good friend. 
The former couple were photographed chatting privately backstage and seemed to be on good terms. Now, the, first, the pair first began dating during the production of their film Mother, but ended the relationship one year later in November 2017. Florence spoke to Variety about the breakup, revealing the film's poor reviews contributed to their split. She says, quote, I normally just let bad reviews go. Dating the director was different. We'd be on the press tour together, I'd come back to the hotel, and the last thing I want to talk about or think about is a movie. He comes back from the tour, and that's all he wants to talk about. I was doing double duty, trying to be a supportive partner while also being like, can I please, for the love of God, not think about mother for <laughs> one second? I feel her. <laughs> Still, Lauren says she respects her former boat immensely and believes they'll work together again one day. Guess she's really moved on. And now it's time for us to move on from friendly exes to a new couple alert. Couple alert. Avril Lavigne has landed herself a real SOB. <laughs> Woo. That's the son of a billionaire. You like oh boy, that, Andrea? Yeah, son of a billionaire. <laughs> After two <laughs> difficult divorces, the singer is giving romance another shot with Philip Seraphim, the son of an Egyptian-American investor worth nearly $1.5 billion. That's $1.5 wow. billion. In late April, the new couple, who reportedly met through friends, were spotted holding hands while grocery shopping in L.A. Rich people are just like us. Now, a source tells people that since being diagnosed with Lyme disease in 2014, Levine has chosen to live a more quiet life. But with her first album in five years due out later this year, she's ready to step back into the spotlight. In April, Avril said, quote, I have my life back, which is amazing. Good for her. Yeah. I love it. And those are your star tracks for today. No, I just got to find a billionaire. An <laughs> SOB. If any uh, SOBs are watching this, hit me up. All Call right. Her. Stay with us. <laughs> Jennifer Lopez reveals what she thinks about aging ahead of her 49th birthday, plus all the latest on Prince Harry and Meghan's honeymoon rumors. We'll tell you where they're most likely to go. All right, everyone, we have a new trend alert. Say goodbye to the little black dress and hello to the blazer. That is right, all your favorite A-listers are embracing this sexy new take on suiting, and the fashionable yet sophisticated ensemble is turning heads on and off the red carpet. Celebrity stylist Christina Ehrlich, who helped pull together these looks for Tina Fey and Mandy Moore, can't get enough of the blazer dress, telling people, quote, suiting overall, whether it's an actual suit or a men's style blazer fitted as a dress, is a powerful yet feminine look. I'd have to agree. Bella Hadid spiced up her blazer dress with a bright pop of color, look at that pink, while Gal Gadot kept things interesting with some design and a little fringe. I'm loving that look as well. She looks amazing. So whether you're heading to an A-studded premiere or just off to a dinner with your girlfriends, the blazer dress is one statement piece to add to your closet. Now you're a fan of that look, huh? I love that look. Perfect mix of masculine and feminine. I'm like sophisticated. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's check in on our question of the day. It's National Smile Day. Woo! So we're asking, what puts a smile on your face? Yeah, as Sandra says, my husband puts a smile on my face every day. I love That's that. cute. That's love is cute. real. <laughs> <laughs> and another Twitter user says, the beach, nothing better than lounging in the sand. That I is agree. very yeah. true. Keep those comments coming in. But now on to this. Jennifer Lopez is turning 49 in July. What? And while she doesn't seem to age ever, I mean, she still looks flawless, the multi-talented star spoke to Emmy Magazine and revealed that she has no plans of slowing down anytime soon. J-Lo joked with the magazine saying, quote, listen, at some point I'm going to age. They'll say, she looks old, <laughs> but right now I'm holding it together. That's an understatement. She's, even her boyfriend, Alex Rodriguez, recently commented on her youthful spirit. The world of Dan Starver calls, quote, the other day Alex was across the lawn and I brought him something and then I ran away. And he said, you run like you're 25 years old. Ooh. I haven't stopped that pace, <laughs> so I'm still at that pace, I guess. When things start aching more, it'll be different. <laughs> I like that. But with two NBC shows, a Las Vegas residency and new music, it doesn't look like she's aching at all. No, not at all. Lopez even shared how she juggles everything that she has going on. She's got a lot going on. She says, quote, I just take it day by day because it's too much stuff and I try not to worry about too much. When I leave here, I'll go home, have a nice dinner, then I'll go to my bedroom, have a nice bath, I'll have a chocolate chip, a chocolate chip cookie with milk, I'll watch TV, and then I'm like, okay, Tomorrow is full out. All I heard was cookie. That's what I want. <laughs> but while J-Lo has an amazing career, she has made it known that their 10-year-old twins, Emmy and Max, will always take first priority. Even her fellow World of Dance judge, Derek Hupp, has said, quote, if her kids are calling or FaceTiming, no matter what is going on, Jennifer picks it up. She can be in the middle of a comment on the show, and she'll go, oh, my kids are calling me. 
Her priority is her family. It's been a lovely thing to see. It is wonderful to see. All right, you guys, watch this. Well, Adam Levine likes the ladies. Mm -hmm. The music video for Maroon 5's new single, Girls Like You, features lots of powerful women. But no cameo is quite as adorable as Levine's wife, Bahati Prinsloo, and daughter, Dusty Rose. And Dusty looks like a natural in front of the camera. Look at her in her tiny so black cute. dress. And Bahati's body looks amazing. Those ripped jeans and that Whoa. white t-shirt. Calm yes. down, Lola. <laughs> Operation <laughs> Snapback, <laughs> girl. Check out all the other <laughs> famous faces. Tiffany Haddish, Jennifer Lopez, Ali Raisman, even Wonder Woman herself joined in on the fun. And the band also highlights several activists, authors, and more power women. More power women. I gotta say, I'm loving all this girl power. Look at Mary J. Blige. Yeah, it's a great message. And I also love that we got to see Adam's family all together. Me too, they are so cute. But we are missing one one important family member, the couple's three-month-old daughter, Gio. But hey, there's still plenty of time for her to make her own music video debut. Yes, baby steps, baby steps. And while we're talking kids... As Farah Abraham and her daughter, Sophia, are living it up in Dubai. The Teen Mom OG star shared photos of her daughter enjoying a gold-flaked apple juice. Yes, I said a gold-flaked apple juice. I can't believe this. But <laughs> now, know. before you go searching for where you can buy yourself some of that fancy juice, you should know that one bottle sells for $150, according to website Love in Dubai. Pocket change, right? <laughs> the mother-daughter duo sipped the specialty drink at the Skyview Bar at the top of the Burj Al Arab, which in case you weren't aware, is one of the most luxurious hotels in the world. Now the two were having an early celebration for Farrah's 28th birthday, but that's not all they did the afternoon before the reality star's big day. Yeah, that's right. Farrah and her daughter finished the evening off by heading to Dubai's tallest building, the Burj Khalifa, for iftar, which is the meal after sunset, the breaks the all-day fast during Ramadan. It looks like they had a great time. And a big happy birthday to Farah. Happy birthday, Farah. Happy birthday. I'm very sorry that this isn't the news we were hoping for, but you have to understand the number of spots we're talking about. Of course, and, and, and I know how many kids you have to place. Whoa, I'm not sure what you're implying here, but you know that I care very deeply about Jake which is why I'm doing everything in my power to place him somewhere where he feels safe and comfortable enough to... To dress like a girl. Okay. And that, that's obviously what you're I, saying. Alex. And maybe the problem is that we all started pitching him Alex, some kind of... Alex, he had no idea what was in that essay. It doesn't essay. matter. Obviously, it's going to affect the way that people treat I'm him. I'm talking about him feeling safe and respected. Well, that's a tense look at the new film, A Kid Like Jake, starring Claire Danes, Jim Parsons, and Octavia Spencer. Now, the film is about a boy, Jake, who doesn't fit into these gender norms that society has. He likes to play with dolls and the usual girly things. So the elephant in the room is whether or not the parents are dealing with a transgender child and how to deal with that. It's a very complex plot, so I'd ask the cast how their personal experiences with children helped inform their roles. That's not the case with my son exactly, but I certainly, certainly understand what it is to have anxiety about him being safe in the world and being identified as 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 other in some way. And, and it's a completely natural impulse. And I, I think that's really at the root of this story. To see specifically what it means to day to day navigate whether or not they're truly being presented with um, a possible transgender child. I, it did two things for me. It made me feel very empathetic for for anyone, you know, what it is to, to go through that, but also the way it, it took some mystery away from it. The film also stars Octavia Spencer and is directed by Silas Howard, who is a transgender filmmaker, so it has very special significance for him. Now, I asked them what it was like having kids on set, especially the super adorable Leo James Davis, who plays Jake in the film. Oh, I'm used to working with kids a lot. I think I'm the one person in Hollywood that's worked with animals and children on like every project. So uh, this was refreshing because it was just very different. Uh, Leo is a little 
fairy just filled with magic and, and, and joy. So it was wonderful, you know, being a part of uh, his little world, what yeah. do you think? No, I feel the same way. I mean, I, I, I asked casting if we found a, a kid who naturally, you know, was a boy who loved beautiful things and loved dresses and loved princess things, that would be great because uh, the movie intentionally isn't focused on the child because it's not about that, it's about the society. So we sort of flip the camera around the parents and the world around. He asked why boys can't wear skirts. But that said, Leo really has like the best fashion and yeah. amazing <laughs> and is really, his parents are very supportive and they were surprised that actually they were not thinking it was very radical to support their kid to be the way he wanted to be, but they found pushback at the school and certain they're sort of engaged in, in trying to make some changes around that. So it was amazing that what we were talking about in the film are, are you know, the parents of Jake were also dealing with in the real world. Mm -hmm. So it felt like we were really doing something important and timely. Well, now that the dust has settled on the wedding of the year, the next thing we can't stop speculating about is Harry and Meghan's potential honeymoon destinations, of course. So here to separate the fact from the fiction and bring us all the latest on our fave royal fam is our royal correspondent, Imogen Lloyd Webber. Welcome. Good to see you. I know, nice to see you too. Okay, Imogen, this honeymoon. So before the wedding, we heard rumors that Harry and Meghan were going to Namibia. Then this week it was rumored they were going to a resort in Canada. So bring us up to speed. What is true? What is false? Okay, there was talk that the newlyweds were at Alberta's Fairmont Jasper Park Lodge, which has a long-standing history of serving as a royal retreat. King George VI and the Queen Mother, as well as Queen Elizabeth and Prince Charles, have all stayed there. The resort even has a royal retreat cabin named for its first set of regal guests back in 1939. And look at these photos, it's beautiful. Gorgeous, yeah. yes. <laughs> However, the luxury resort has denied that Meghan and Harry are honeymooning there. Africa is still at the top of the list, and there has been a rumor going around for weeks now that their honeymoon locale is a Honeb Valley camp in Namibia, which brings glamping to a whole new level. A rep from the camp declined to comment to people on that possibility, so we'll have to wait and see. Okay, so what you're saying is we really don't know where they're going. We really don't. Okay, know. sorry. So, <laughs> but do you think the palace actually encourages these rumors to kind of misdirect the public for security reasons? As much as security is about misdirecting the press, mm. both Harry and William have got what's known as a smile hatred of the media. They believed it helped kill their mother and are thus very protective of those that they love and their privacy. This move is right out of William and Kate's wedding playbook. They delayed their honeymoon to the Seychelles for 10 days after their wedding until the intention on them had slightly died down. We saw Harry and Meghan at Prince Charles's garden party right after their wedding, and now they've subtly slipped off. So we kind of fell into their trap. Yeah, we did. Right. But you know, what are the key things they'll be looking for in a honeymoon spot? Their privacy is key. Harry has often found it in Africa and has often spoke of his love of the continent, calling it the place where, quote, I feel more like myself than anywhere in the world. Harry took Meghan to Botswana on their third date, as you do, yeah. and it's where the centre stone <laughs> on her engagement ring is sourced from. As for Meghan's taste, the summer that she met Harry, she went on a four-week break during the suits hiatus. Places she visited included Ibiza, Madrid, Capri and Positano. Security is also an important consideration. William and Kate's protection officers did recon on two destinations before they decided on the Seychelles. Okay, so royal honeymoons throughout history vary in length and destination. Yeah. Now, Princess Diana and Prince Charles, for example, honeymooned all around the world for three months, while William and Kate went to the Seychelles for 10 days. So what do you expect, Imogen? <laughs> How long will Harry and Meghan be away? Okay, so while the Royal Yacht Britannia was in service, royal couples tended to take advantage of that. Charles and Diana cruise the Mediterranean, making stops in places like the Greek island of Crete as part of their honeymoon in 81. In 1960, Princess Margaret and Lord Snowden visited the Caribbean on Britannia, while in 1986, Prince Andrew and Sarah Ferguson went for a five-day sail in the Atlantic around the Azores Island in Portugal. The next time we're expecting to see Meghan and Harry is for the Queen's official birthday celebration, Trooping the Colour, on June the 9th. It will be the first time Meghan appears on Buckingham Palace's famous balcony as a member of Britain's royal family. I mean, Imogen, all I want to do is travel now that you name all these places, places I'm now learning about. Um, I am curious, what is it like to travel like a royal? Do they have this big entourage? Do they always fly private? Like, who packs for them? <laughs> Any insight you can give us? Okay, it depends. If they're trying to keep under the radar, they will fly private. William and Kate did for their honeymoon. However, they're often seen on commercial airlines as well. They do have budgets. Okay. Princess Kate, yeah, Princess Kate flew to Rotterdam on a British Airways flight in 2016, and William has even been seen on Ryanair. 
If it's an official trip, they do have an entourage, but it's probably smaller than Beyonce's. <laughs> when they visited LA in 2011, William and Kate brought just seven people with them. If it's a tour, then they'll have a lot of luggage. They have to change outfits multiple times. Royals have a very organized system, so all bags tend to have color-coded labels for every member of the family. All royals need passports apart from the Queen, as passports are issued in her name. And the big one, royal protocol dictates that two heirs should not fly together. William has to get permission from the Queen to fly on the same plane as George. Mm. Huh. I like that little tidbit. <laughs> um, okay, so when your friend goes on vacation, obviously you get a little jealous sometimes, yeah. but I always like you can kind of live vicariously through them by looking at their Instagram. Now, Meghan Markle used to post the best pictures from her time abroad, but as we all know, she had to deactivate her social media accounts because she is royal now, but Princess Eugenie, Harry's cousin, actually has an Instagram. So why is she allowed to have one? Well, although Eugenie may be a princess of the royal blood, so if Meghan is without Prince Harry, she is supposed to curtsy to her, she isn't a working royal. Eugenie actually has a proper job in an art gallery and isn't listed on the official royal website. Therefore, I imagine she was allowed to have her own Instagram account. The royals are all over social media. There is a general royal family handle and also one for Kensington Palace, the official account for the Fab Four and their foundation, which is based at KP. Interestingly, Eugenie's father has an official Duke of York Twitter handle run by his office. And then her mother, Fergie, who most definitely isn't a working royal anymore, is all over social media. Who can forget her excitement when Eugenie announced her engagement? <laughs> <laughs> Megan said she wanted to start this new chapter of her life with a clean slate, hence no big surprise she adhered to Royal Protocol and deleted her accounts. But who knows if she'll have her own social media again at some point. The monarchy is all about evolution, it has to be to survive. I would say I would give up Instagram to become a royal. I would there do it. I be a princess. Yes. Princess Andrea. <laughs> um, Imogen, oh my gosh, I like the ring to it. <laughs> Don't tempt me. Um, thank you so much for stopping by and lending your expertise as always. And you guys, stay on people.com for all the latest royal updates and royal hunting honeymoon updates as they become available. All right, let's check in on our question of the day one last time. In honor of National Smile Day, <laughs> we're asking what puts a smile on your face? Maybe it's these celebrities smiling. Oh, yeah. I don't know. One Twitter user says, puppies and delish food. I agree. Puppies, I always smile when I see puppies on the street. Absolutely. Beyonce makes me smile. Yeah. <laughs> and let's see what else the Twitter world is saying. Yeah, we got, oh, my kitten. Ooh. This person's kitten makes them smile. The kitten doesn't look very happy, but... <laughs> That would make me smile, too. All right, you guys, coming up tomorrow, actor Sam Claflin is giving us a sneak peek of the dramatic new movie Adrift and dishing on his co-star Shailene Woodley. You don't want to miss it. That's right. And thanks for watching, and see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Bye. Smile. smile. Remember to smile. <laughs>